For most visitors, a ride on the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad begins on the boarding platform and that first step onto the train. But hours before the call of all aboard is heard, the train crew has arrived at the roundhouse to start getting ready for the day's run. Sparks were flying as we watched workers doing repairs on some of the other engines, but over at engine 473, our engineers were already stoking the fire that fires the steam, that moves the engine, that pulls the train. The locomotive itself, yeah, steam engine, it just don't get in and hit the start button. Uh, the roundhouse crew keeps it hot all night, uh, where they'll fire it up for three or four or five hours before we get here. So it, it's uh, steamed up, ready to go. And then we have our few things we have to do. The engineer, you know, I'd look, look it over, inspect it, go around, oil it. Yes, it's quite a process, all right. But it's also a love affair for the engineers who know every inch of this engine, what tanks to drain daily, where the water release spout is, every single one of the many lubrication points, every little detail that makes running a steam train the art that it is. Of course, one of the coolest things is the classic round table that slowly spins around and gets the train pointed in the right direction. It's a short run to the coal loading area. And while the coal car is being topped off, George is making another round with his oil can. Well, that's just the nature of the beast. They just go through a lot of oil, and that's, that's one of their many downfalls of why steam engines went the way of dinosaurs. Well, they may be dinosaurs, but we love our dinosaurs, don't we? And I was especially excited and very lucky to ride in the cab of old 473. The American Locomotive Company in Schenectady, New York, built this engine in 1923, and it was a workhorse until steam gave way to diesel. It only takes a few minutes to get over to pick up the other passengers, but this short ride was a longtime dream of mine and just the start of another great day for the DNS Railroad. Durango grew up around the narrow gauge train. It was the critical supply link to take supplies to the Silverton miners and bring back the ore. It's still very much the center of attention every time it runs today. And holy smokes, what a thrill it was to be on board when the train started huffing and puffing and slowly picking up speed and we headed out of town. mining boom of course has long passed, but one thing that has never changed, the breathtaking scenery of the Animus River Canyon. And what makes the Durango Silverton trip one of the best, if not the best, train rides in the country. Add a layer of snow and this could easily be the set of a made for TV movie. It is gorgeous. I feel like it's our best kept secret. It is such, even though it's the same tracks, it is such a totally different trip, especially on a bluebird day like today with fresh snow and the blue skies. It's just so beautiful going along the Animus River. In the winter, the train runs a shortened schedule. Oh, it still serves as a commuter train for backpackers. And on this day, for two workers from the U.S. Geological Survey checking water flows. And since this is a steam train, the train also has to make a scheduled stop to take on the water that makes the steam. We used about 4,000 gallons between Durango and Tank Creek. If we were going on to Silverton, we'd make one more water stop on the way up. From here, it was just a short trip to our final destination on this brilliant winter day. That place, Cascade Canyon. It's not a long layover, but there is enough time for travelers to set up a picnic lunch along the river and fill up on the scenery. Some of our fellow passengers took a short hike up the river. Some others went undercover to enjoy the warm fire burning inside the shelter. 
It's a magical day to say the least, and it ends just like it began, on a train traveling through stunning scenery in a place that has been much the same for centuries.